Welcome to the second episode of my electric skateboard series. In the last episode I made a handheld skateboard remote controller that I in the end was not entirely happy with. Today we are fixing that by making a new remote. I'll be making a few references to the previous video, so make sure to watch it if you haven't already. So without further ado, let's dive into the electrical system. The brain of the system is a 3.3 volt Arduino Pro Mini. The power source is a LiPo battery, which can be charged with the help of a TP4056 module. This module will be positioned so that the USB port is accessible from outside of the case. Since battery voltage drops during discharge, a buck boost converter will be used to provide a stable 3.3 volt power supply for the system. By assuming that the entire system consumes about 45 milliamps, and that the efficiency of the buck boost converter is 80%, I was able to calculate the battery life to roughly 23 hours. For me, this is a good compromise between battery size and battery life. It allows me to go for multiple rides without even having to think about recharging the remote, yet keeps it small enough to fit well in my hand. But at some point I will evidently have to charge the remote, and I rather know when this point is coming, so I need a way of monitoring the battery voltage. The maximum voltage that the battery can reach is approximately 4.2 volts, but the Arduino Pro Mini can only read voltages up to 3.3 volt, so I need to scale it down using a voltage divider. To establish the voltage monitoring system, we need to measure the battery voltage when it's fully charged and record the corresponding value obtained by the Arduino through the voltage divider. With these reference values and the real-time readings from the voltage divider, it is possible to calculate the battery voltage at any time. The battery voltage will then be displayed on a small 128 by 32 pixel screen, allowing me to know when the remote needs to be recharged. The skateboard and remote controller communicate using Wi-Fi through a pair of NRF24 L1 modules. The remote sends the user input to the skateboard, which processes it to control the motor. In return the skateboard provides data on its internal battery voltage and the motor's RPM, allowing us to calculate speed and trip distance. These values will then also be displayed on the screen. In total, there are four buttons in the system. One button serves as cruise control, which maintains the current speed of the board when it's held down. The three remaining buttons will initially be left unassigned, but later on I will probably add additional functions such as different power modes and reversing. At last, acceleration control is handled by a potentiometer, and a slide switch is used to power the system on and off. After defining the system, I proceeded to order all the parts, which arrived almost simultaneously just a couple of days later. The efficiency of this buck boost converter turned out to be very low, around 30%. Fortunately, I came across another converter. While only slightly larger, it offered a higher efficiency of about 80-90%, to so I proceeded to order that instead. Since the Pro Mini does not have a USB interface, I bought this USB to serial adapter that I can use to connect the Pro Mini to a computer for coding. I also ordered a few wristbands, which one of them will be used to secure the remote to my arm during riding, preventing any accidental drops. And last up was the NRF24 L01 module. The buttons, potentiometer and slide switch I already had lying around. All the electrical components should not just fit in the remote. They should fit in such a way that I can make an ergonomic enclosure around them. And I have basically no experience for making things that should be ergonomic. Apart from my last remote. Which wasn't. So I began by seeking inspiration from already existing ergonomic handle tools, appliances and similar. Then, I experimented with different cardboard cutouts in order to find a design that would fit my hand comfortably. Once I found something that I liked, I printed out a few 3D prototypes in order to further refine the design. And this is what I settled on. I could grip it comfortably and I thought it looked decent. So I hopped onto CAD and started working on the interior of the case. This time around I wanted to make the soldering and assembly process easier. My idea was to make a part with guide rails that all the electrical modules can slide into. That way, I can work with the electrical components either on or off the piece while not being obstructed by the outer shell of the remote. And as the remote is assembled, the outer shell will lock the modules in place, preventing them from sliding out of the rails. This approach would eliminate the need for screws or glue to secure the electrical components in place, allowing for easier maintenance and adjustments later on. The only screws that I intend to use are the ones that will hold the two halves of the remote together. So with this concept in mind, I kept working, continuously adjusting, printing and testing. And through this process, I eventually arrived at something that seemed to work.
My idea for the case was to make the sides see-through, just as in the last version of the remote. The case will be 3D printed, then coated in a layer of epoxy, sanded down to a smooth surface, and then painted black. This process serves the purpose of increasing durability and removing the layer lines from 3D printing. So I committed to make the parts for the final version. With all the components ready and soldering work complete, it is time to bring everything together and assemble the functional remote. First off, the transparent side cover is placed in the bottom half of the controller. And next, all the electrical components are positioned on top of the side cover. Some components are mounted on the outer shell of the remote and therefore have to be adjusted in order to get them into their correct position. After assembling the remote, I began the coding phase, which went quite smoothly thanks to having assistance from an AI. Nevertheless, slow data transmission between the remote and skateboard posed a challenge, primarily due to the code's slow execution caused by the screen update delay. But after some effort of making the screen update code run more efficiently, I got it to transmit at a rate of 15 times per second, which I thought was good enough. Let's take a look at the remote in its final form. The charging port and slide switch is found at the bottom, and flicking the slide switch turns the remote on. The screen is positioned on the side of the remote, where it's not obstructed by any fingers. Currently, it's displaying the voltage of the skateboard and remote controller, along with current speed and trip distance. When the control wheel is pushed forward, the skateboard accelerates, and when pulled backwards, the skateboard breaks and recharges the battery. The spring-loaded arm pushes against the control wheel, so that it always returns to center when released. When in the center position, the motor can run freely. The cruise control button is located where the index finger rests. When held down, it is possible to fine-tune the target speed with the control wheel. The three programmable buttons are on the side of the remote. Currently, one of these buttons is programmed to be a kill switch which overrides any other code executions and gradually deaccelerates the board to a complete stop. There is also a possibility to program logic into the three buttons, so that for example pressing two buttons at the same time would activate a certain function. With many different button combinations at my disposal, I can enable a wide range of functions. When compared to the previous remote, it is seen that the new remote is smaller and more ergonomic. The new remote has more components in it, yet I was able to reduce the weight and size of the controller considerably. This reduction can be attributed to a few design choices. Firstly, I used a smaller 3.3V Arduino Pro Mini in place of the 5V Arduino Nano. This change not only reduces the controller size, but also makes it so that all components operate at 3.3V, simplifying the design. However, what made the biggest difference to the size is the use of a smaller battery. In the last version, I used a 3100 mAh battery with a so-called battery shield, which is basically a battery charger, holder, voltage converter and more packed into a single module. In the new design, I've chosen a 1300 mAh battery along with a separate voltage converter and charger. And as you can see, the new battery system is a lot smaller. Honestly, I'm very happy with this new remote. And as time passes and I figure out my preferences for the remote, 
It feels good to know that I can easily customize it thanks to having both the CAD files and the code. Plus, if it ever was to break, I can easily fix it. And as for a potential version 3, well, only time will reveal if that's in the cards. I hope you liked this video. In the next episode, I will make the skateboard. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye.